Greetings friends, Jennifer Nicole Campbell here, and today we're going to be talking about how to practice Bergmuller's Ballade. Bergmuller's Ballade is a great piece to play for your friends and family, maybe around Halloween time as we approach here to the autumn season. He writes Mysterioso at the beginning. Don't you think this sounds spooky? I know, like something's going to sneak up on you, right? So I'm going to share a few practice tips for those of you that are learning this piece. First practice tip is working on balancing the hands because the right hand for a change doesn't have the melody. The right hand's hanging out on these chords, creating the spooky atmosphere like something's in the woods. The left hand has to be slightly louder than the right hand so that you don't have which <laughs> tends to happen because the right hand's used to having the melody. What you can do is do something called ghost playing. Ah, oh, just in time for Halloween. No, I didn't plan that. This is something I do with my students a lot. So ghost playing is when what you'll do is the right hand is just going to lightly, barely touch the keys. You don't want the notes to sound at all. This is the first step. So you just lightly let them touch the keys while you do play your left hand. It's a little tricky at first, it's a little bit of a mind game. The second step is to let some of those notes sound, but not all of them. And then the third step is to let all of those notes in the right hand sound, but again, very light to the touch. So what that does is that you're training your right hand to be more conscious. All those little fingertips need to be aware of what's going on on the topography of the keys and just how much you're pressing down. So that's one way to help your right hand become aware of that. You can do this with other pieces as well if you're working on voicing for let's say except in that case you'd work on the left hand doing the same kind of step. So there are three steps to that. Okay. You can also apply this ghost playing technique to measure 23 although this time you're going to have the left hand going, doing ghost playing. So you don't end up with something like this. So the right hand, because they're dotted quarter notes, you're going to have to give them a little bit more presence in the sound, almost as if you're singing it. And I know some of you out there might not want to sing as you play, but it can be very helpful. Whatever, you can come up with words if you want. That can make it more enjoyable. And your left hand, again, doing the ghost playing. Another way you can practice your left hand with this, just to get more familiar with the chords, is don't worry about the rhythm. You're just going to be playing solid chords together with your right hand melody. going to help you know exactly what chord your left hand is going to. Another practice spot is this stuff at the end when both hands are playing parallel. Measure 71. Those can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes the right hand gets ahead of the left hand. Sometimes the left hand gets ahead of the right hand. How do we practice that? I'm a big fan of dotted rhythm practice. So doing... Okay, and then do the opposite. Short, long, short, long, short, long. Another way to practice, do one measure plus the note of the next. Kind of sounds like, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, that was maybe a bad reference, but whatever. Adam's Family, you guys know that tune? A lot of my students like to play that just because they like to snap. So that's another way to practice that. The ending, practicing, doing exactly what you're doing here. Now, a very hot tip for students out there is that see the ending and they think, oh my gosh, look at all these ledger lines, it looks so difficult. All you have to know is that it's the C minor chord, okay, up an octave higher and another octave higher. You don't even have to worry about figuring out all those ledger, deciphering, deciphering all those ledger lines. You can just, okay, okay, know exactly where you're going. Don't bother looking at the page because remember, the page is just your map. I highly encourage you to memorize as you go along, if you can, but especially memorize the ending. There's no need for you to say, oh, here's those ledger lines up and da 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 da
right? No need to do that. It's going to make it easier for you and for your listeners, okay? And you can also practice this jump. That's another good practice spot. So those are just a few of the practice spots in this piece. So your ghost playing, work on that to help with your voicing. Practice with blocked chords in the B section where it changes, transforms to C major very briefly. And then at the end, working on dotted rhythm practice, just doing one measure at a time plus the first beat of the next measure or first note of the next measure. And practice your endings. So I guess there's four practice spots for you to look at. Of course, there are plenty of other little things to work on. You might want to work on these chords. Especially if you're not used to moving around and you're used to just having your hands in one place. That's another hot practice tip for you. So I'm going to play through the whole thing now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you next time. Here's Bergmuller's Ballade. happens in the story? We didn't even talk about the story. Maybe that'll be for the next video. What's the story behind Bergmuller's Ballad? We'll see you next time.